Hey guys, my name is Jared Schoonmaker. Welcome back to the Magnetic Men channel. Today's video, we're gonna talk about social status relativity and how you can use it to your advantage in your businesses, in your relationships, in just meeting new people. Maybe you wanna get in front of somebody who is a little bit more high power than you. Stay tuned, listen to this information, digest it, understand how social relativity works. And at the end, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks and tools that you can use to use to your advantage so that you can level up yourself and those around you. Have you ever noticed that your social status, your social influences changes depending on who you're with and really where you are? Your personal values and your social status are always relative because there's no measurement, there's no set measurement anyway, and because it doesn't depend solely on you. For the most part, your personal values and your social status specifically depends on the assessment of the people around you. You can be a fucking rock star in one group and a complete nobody in another group. So let's review different types of groups that will make you valuable or useless within them. Groups that form based around interests. Being good at whatever skill those groups value will give you status within that specific group. So maybe you have the most badass button collection or most badass stamp collection. Well, there's people who also have stamp collections, who have button collections, and the guy with the most stamps or the most buttons has a boost, generally the highest social value. Maybe you're in a chess club and you're better at most of the players in there, that would mean your social status is higher relative to the other players. This goes for all groups that focus based around the interests of the individual. So it makes sense. If you're in a group and you're one of the best in the group, you're generally most admired in that group or one of the most admired in that group. And if you left that group, let's say you just left chess club and everybody knew you and you walk down to a basketball court and you don't know anything about playing basketball, well then you'd be a nobody within that group. The next type of group that we want to talk a little bit about are these are the groups that are kind of, they exclude based on lack of common traits. Some groups bond around certain traits. That trait might be an advantage because everybody has it, but if you don't have it, you're automatically excluded. And a perfect example of this is college students. For the most part, most college students are 18 to we'll say 26. Well, let's say now, you decide after a career, you want to make a career change and you decide to go into college at 46. You are going to be the old person. You're going to be basically the professor's ages. So the group as a whole is going to exclude you because you don't assess or you don't have the common trait, which is youth. You, they don't belong. They're too old relative to that group and that group's going to exclude them based upon their age. Another group that you may have been brought into or a group that you understand is groups that are based about rank. And pretty much all businesses are, or companies are structured like this. It depends on the position or the rank that you hold within that company, which is formalized usually through a title. So titles really don't obviously make good leaders, but titles have a majority impact on the social hierarchy within that company. So I could be a CEO of the company. I might be a piece of shit. I might suck 
as the CEO, but the rank I have will give me social status, much more social status than say the janitor of that same company. So a lot of companies are based or have their hierarchy based around the ranking structure within that group. Another one is hate groups. Hate groups are often rewarded to the person who hates the most, who is the most extreme within that group. You have, you know, hate groups that are specific for white people, for black people. There's all types of hate groups. You see it right now a lot with the Israel-Palestine movement, especially in colleges where you have massive groups that hate Jewish people that are saying they want what's right for Palestine. Now, I'm not going to get into all of that, but you see it, that these groups band together and it's the most extreme within that group have the most status. And hate groups most likely form when there's that strong pride in what makes them that group. So again, the Israeli movement or the, the, the Palestinian movement, it's this collective pride they have within the group. And then they build their pride around the enemies. They build their pride around that out group of enemies. Another perfect one is bars and clubs. Your status is always relative to the other patrons. So let's say you're super dressed up. You're in a three-piece suit. You just get out of Wall Street. Maybe you're a Wall Street investment banker. And you go to a dive bar. Well, relative to the other patrons, you're the most dressed up, but you're also going to be the most out of place. If you flipped it and you went to a high-end, very fancy nightclub where everybody was dressed just like you, then your social status is going to be relative to everybody in there. But if I walked in with flip-flops and a t-shirt coming from that low-end bar, well, now my relativity is going to be much lower than everybody else in that high-end nightclub. So it's definitely predicated on the type of bar you're in or the type of club, how you're dressed, um, obviously your body language, how you look, your mannerisms, the display or lack of display of wealth, and the group of friends that you have or that you bring within that bar or club. And then we have forced groups. Some groups have to form out of necessity and it's not really within the control or the will of the people. For instance, high school. High school is a collective of individuals. Now, yes, you will form a group within the group but high school as a whole is a group. Military draft is another one. Prisons is another one. They're all sort of forced to be together for a specific period of time. These groups tend to be highly dif differentiate and there's little overlap between what's popular in one group and what works in another group. So, for instance, popularity in high school is the social currency. Or strength is the social currency of the military, and violence is the alliance in prisons. Speaking of being part of the cool club, if you like content like this, if you're picking up what I'm putting down, consider subscribing to the channel. All the cool kids are doing it. All the cool kids in the group that we just talked about said, yeah, Jared, I want to be part of your group. How can I do it? Well, just hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment and that bell icon. With that, let's get back at it. Sometimes you can completely change the environment without joining any specific group. For example, when you travel to different countries, and we're going to get into this in a few other videos, but being simply being more exotic than everybody else within that country is going to get you noticed. It's going to elevate your social status. Why do you think 
passport bros or guys that are leaving the US, leaving England, leaving Australia, and going to these Asian countries. Because in these Asian countries, these men, even though they may be average in the US, are considered different, are considered exceptional in these Asian countries because they look different. They act different. They have different mannerisms. Generally, they might be taller. So they've changed their, by just changing the environment, they were able to affect massive change in their social status. This is why the idea of passport bros, of going and finding a girlfriend or finding a wife in these Asian countries is so appealing to men who may not be able to date effectively in the US or possibly Canada or these westernized cultures. Simply being more exotic can get people to notice you more and obviously if they notice you more, you become more interesting. The more interesting you become allows for more possibility for people to approach you, to get to know you, AKA women, so that you have choice and you can date. Again, this is why the passport bro, the passport movement is so effective. This is why men leave Western countries to go to these Asian countries because they immediately can increase their social status literally overnight without changing anything about them. So how can you use social relativity to your advantage in real life? Well, it's a good question. To get what you want from people or to start friendships, to start relationships, you have to show them the currency they specifically value. Basically, you have to sell them on what they're buying. For example, let's say you're a dude and you find gothic artist type women super sexy. Well, if you're trying to date that type of woman, well then you're going to want to speak her language. So you're going to want to learn art. You're going to want to maybe learn how to draw. You're going to want to educate yourself on maybe the specific types of art she's into. I don't know, but you have to learn her language. And once you're able to maybe start drawing and you're acting and you're attending these exhibitions, you're going to pick up the lingo and that common topics and you'll be able to more or less be more comfortable in talking to these types of women. And because like attracts likes, they're like, okay, this guy likes art. He's relatively cute. Let's talk to him. Ergo, you are now immersing yourself into what she likes in order to have the opportunity to date that type of woman. You are effectively selling what she's buying. If you want to give business value to get business value. So let's just say you are looking to mingle in business circles and your, your hope is to attract a top notch business mentor. You don't want to try to seek employment for these people because that's what everybody does. What you want to do is speak to these types of people in a currency they want instead. Basically what's in it for them. So what you could do is start hobnobbing and talking with these business executives and befriending them, but go to them and say, listen, I want to learn your business. I will work for you for free for three months. You don't have to pay me. And if I do really great, then we'll talk about you paying me. But if I don't do great and you don't think I have what it takes, no harm, no foul. At least I learned, at least I learned from you and I will always thank you for the opportunity to learn from you. Now you're speaking a language this guy understands. So basically in all these, in these two scenarios, you have to understand the group's social currency 
and trade that currency. It's no different than dating. It's no different than maybe you want to start befriending people in sports leagues. And all now you have to immerse yourself in that specific sport. Now like becomes like, and now you have commonality, you're in the group. Now you can have friends within that sports group. Makes sense? Of course it makes sense. But a lot of people go about this completely different. That's why I wanted to do a video on it. You have to sell yourself or you have to trade the currency other people are using. And final thought on this is you can develop currencies that will work no matter what group you join. Social relationships generally obey non-written rules-based social value exchanges. The more social value you possess, the more you can demand from others. It's called social currency. So far in this video, I've explained that currencies always change depending on the group. And that is true, but some currencies will always stay in demand no matter what group you are. And these are your social skills, your communication skills, the way you look, your, your resources or your ability to acquire them, your confidence, your charisma. These are universal across all social platforms, across all social groups. When you possess them, you tend to do well pretty much in all social groups. So the summary here, guys, is we have seen what people value can be highly relative depending on the group you join. But your social status in these groups will hinge on whether or not you have currencies to trade within that group. Focus on the general currencies and you'll always do best in whatever group you decide to join. With that, my name is Jared Skumek. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have questions specific about this, I do get a lot of consultations and a lot of people talk about, hey, I'm X years old and I'm having a hard time. Well, this is the video specifically why I tailored it for you. It's group social dynamics, group values, group currencies. If you can understand this, then you can literally immerse yourself in any group or individual you choose once you understand what they value, now you can sell them on that value. My name is Jared Schumacher. This is the Magnetic Men's Club, and we'll talk soon.